If you were to look back at the history of the great television sitcoms, more often than not you'd find a star at the center of things. But the smart ones surround themselves with an ensemble of actors, characters that become equally as memorable. From the Jack Benny program to the Mary Tyler Moore show, Cheers, Seinfeld, and The Office, the evidence is there. But one series that is very much in a league of its own is The Andy Griffith Show. Running on CBS from 1960 to 1968 for a total of eight seasons and 249 episodes, The Andy Griffith Show, which is currently airing on the MeTV network, was set in the fictional North Carolina town of Mayberry and focused on Andy Griffith's single father sheriff Andy Taylor, who was raising his son Opie, Ron Howard, with the help of their Aunt B, Francis Bavier. And then there were the other denizens of the town, notably Deputy Sheriff Barney Fife, Don Knotts, Mechanics Goober and Gomer Pyle, George Lindsay and Jim Neighbors, the town drunk Otis Campbell, Hal Smith, and Floyd Lawson, a.k.a. Floyd the Barber, who struck a particularly strong connection with the audience. As noted above, playing Floyd was actor Howard McNear, who had enjoyed an extensive career in radio and some television long before he arrived in Mayberry at the age of 56. His character is described by Wikipedia as a vague, chatty barber. What is truly amazing is that in the middle of the show's run, Howard suffered a stroke that resulted in the left side of his body being nearly paralyzed. Although he left for a time, he was warmly invited back and managed to make the character even more memorable despite his limitations. Before Howard had his stroke, he was able to be both verbally and physically funny. The character of Floyd was not an airhead in the beginning. He was a caricature of all of the small-town men who had become business owners. They had grown themselves as far as they could possibly grow, which was not very much, and then kind of made themselves into town elders, remarking on everything that went on, because somehow everything in town was their business. Big Debut Veteran Hollywood columnist Hedda Hopper wrote a profile of Howard that was published in January 1960, nine months before The Andy Griffith Show would make its debut, that enthused. When top comedians chew the fat about their craft, Howard McNear's name is bound to come up. He's played with all of them, bringing a unique type of characterization to their shows which no one has succeeded in imitating. I knew him first on my radio shows, later as Mr. Hamish of the George Goble time. I've watched him with George Burns and Gracie Allen, Tennessee Ernie Ford and with Jack Benny. Recently he stepped out of his favorite characterization to play the doctor in Anatomy of a Murder. It brought him a slew of offers for straight roles. Different roles. But I don't like to play straight parts anymore, Howard told Hedda. Just last week I turned one down. My agent could have killed me and so could my wife. But it was a serious thing. They wanted me for a judge who was committing a girl to a mental institution. I didn't think it was right for me. I prefer specialized bits. Iconic character. Hedda also observed that Howard's frustrated character, who leaves sentences hanging in the air at times while pantomime finished out the idea, is too intense to be done too often. Howard McNear was born Howard Turbell McNear on January 27, 1905, in Los Angeles. He studied at the Oatman School of Theater and eventually joined the Savoy Players Stock Company in San Diego, California. He received his first dramatic training from Padia Power, mother of actor Tyrone Power. To the Los Angeles Times he elaborated, As a young fellow, I was painfully shy. I'm still shy. I really feel perfectly at home only when I'm on stage. Meeting people is far harder for me than being behind the footlights. Perhaps that's because I can feel I'm someone else when I'm acting. Setting his sights on radio. Howard gravitated towards radio, where his talents were perfectly suited. In 1937 he voiced the character of Samuel the Seal in the seasonal fantasy show The Cinnamon Bear. From 1938 to 1940 he played Ace Operator, Clint Barlow on the radio serial drama Speed Gibson of the International Secret Police. 
In the 1940s he performed opposite Parley Bear and William Conrad in an adaptation of The Count of Monte Cristo. His career was interrupted by World War II, where he was a private in the U.S. Army Air Corps. Afterward, he went back into radio, beginning with syndicated shows like The Shadow of Fu Manchu, The Lux Radio Theater, and The Cavalcade of America. Iconic Character Hedda also observed that Howard's frustrated character, who leaves sentences hanging in the air at times while pantomime finished out the idea, is too intense to be done too often. For his part, Howard explained of that comic persona, he's a sort of nervous wreck and you can't be on too much with it. Howard had married his wife, Helen Spatz, in 1926 and they were together until his death on January 3, 1969 from complications of pneumonia following a final stroke. All these years later, though, his memory certainly lives on through the lives he touched.